right, here we go, episode 8 of our Bloodborne series. We're going to be painting the Cleric Beast, which is the end boss. We're going to be using an airbrush for this because it's going to really cut down the time we need to paint this thing and make it look pretty pretty crisp, like you can see, obviously, right here. If you don't have one, I have one in the description below if you want to get what I'm using. Otherwise, you can use whatever you want. Or you can paint it and try and do what I'm doing. It's just going to be a little bit tougher. If this is your first time with the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's go. Come on. We are marching to thousand subs and obviously the more people subscribe the more motivation it gives me to do more videos so uh, without further ado let's go all right the first thing we're going to be doing is looking for any mold lines or any gaps we need to fill in there's a couple gaps that i found specifically underneath the shoulder and on the face. I'm going to be using some green stuff to fill it in. And if you don't have any of that, I have a bunch of stuff in the description below that you can look at and decide what you want. But it's just the stuff that I use. You can use those links to buy whatever you want. You don't need to use it. I just have it down there. Um, but we're going to be using some green stuff to fill in those gaps. And there were some pretty nasty ones that I filled in. And while you're filling it in, make sure you let it dry. It doesn't take very long. Give it 15, 20 minutes, it'll dry, and then we can prime it up. I'm using a little nail file to kind of jam that green stuff in there, and it helps kind of smooth it out a little bit and get it in there. A little trick that I have is get your fingers wet or get whatever tool you're using with some water on it, and the green stuff won't stick to it as bad. Now we're going to prime it in black. If you're not using an airbrush, you can just prime it with black spray paint like Chaos Black or whatever Vallejo black you have or whatever kind of black spray paint you have obviously needs to be binding to plastic. And obviously this is what it should look like when it's black. Yeah. All right, the first color we're gonna be using is German Gray from Vallejo. If you don't have this, if you're using primary Citadel paints or P3 or whatever you're using, um, just find a comparable color. Or if you have a gray, mix some black into it. it. It doesn't need to be this specific color, but basically it's it's almost like the black prime plant paint but it's just gonna give it that little tint of gray. And this is gonna basically be our undercoat. So we're gonna hit almost all of this miniature, if not the entire thing. And we're focusing on the skin, the fur, everything. If you get some on the antlers, I guess you could say, for the beast, it's okay, it's not a big deal. But we're just gonna get that nice big undertone. And the reason I'm using an airbrush is because this saves so much time. It's insane how much time an airbrush will save you when you're trying to paint miniatures quickly to get it on the table. So I use an airbrush specifically for big models like this because it absolutely saves you a buttload of time. And that's all I care about because that's the one thing you can't buy, you can't get back, is your time. So I am going over this entire miniature as quickly as possible and hitting all of the under recesses and the vast majority of this miniature. The next step, we're gonna be using some Mechanicus Standard Gray, which is just your basic kind of gray. So if you have something similar, use that. Now we're only gonna be hitting selective spots. So pay attention exactly what I'm doing in the video. If you need to stop and rewind it and rewatch it again, please do that. But we're going to be hitting like the top of the shoulders, the things that the sun is going to hit the most. We're going to kind of outline our abdominal muscles a little bit more, the top of the thighs, the hands, the fingers, the wavy fur that's coming off if you're looking at it on the right hand side of the model. All 
We're also focusing on the arms because the arms are obviously going to take a lot of sun if there is any sun, even in Bloodborne, which I don't think there is. But it gives it that contrasty look that makes it look a little bit better once you have it on the table. While we're doing that, if you get a little bit in spots you don't really need it to, it's okay, it's not a big deal. We can fix it, we can go over with a couple things, a couple techniques. And it might look a little rough as we go along in this stage of the process, but once we put the wash on there that we're gonna create, it's gonna really mix it all together really nice. For our antlers, we are going to use some Rackarth Flesh, which is a base coat that we use for a lot of bones, teeth, a lot of ancient looking, maybe skeletons and whatnot. And we're just basically trying to match that card art that we see for the game. And you can't see all of the card art or all of the miniature on the card art, but we can see the upper portion of it. So we kind of use our imagination on the rest of it. So I'm just kind of filling in the blanks, but we're gonna get that nice base coat on it to get some red in there here in a minute. We also want to get our ribs that are sticking out because they are red in the picture. So just be very careful while you're doing this and we're just going to spray a majority of our ribs and we're going to fill in with some washer in a minute. So if you get it in the recesses, no big deal at all. And just be careful while you're doing this. Take your time. Go nice and slow. Don't try to overdo it. For the red undercoat of our antlers, we're going to be using Tuscor Fur from Citadel. This is a very dull looking red. And we're going to go over probably about 80% of our antlers while we're doing this. Just be careful not to get it on the skin, but if we do, we can, we're going to fix it here in a minute. So don't get, don't worry about it. That's what we're doing in this stage right now. So just go over them nice and easy and take your time. Make sure you do a 360 on your antlers. We're gonna now highlight a lot of our predominant muscles and sun hit areas of our miniature. So we're gonna hit those abdominal muscles, the top of the thighs again, the shoulders, a lot of that fur, if you're looking at the right hand side and the fur that's on the back to kind of give it that nice brightness as if the sun were hitting it. And we're just taking our time, hitting a lot of those fur parts on the top, keeping the under parts of our miniature dark in the recesses, a little bit of the, the buttocks and some of our feet in our miniature to just kind of get that nice contrast of the two tones of gray. For our brightest highlight, we're gonna use Ulthurin Gray from Citadel. And we're just doing the same thing. We're gonna hit the abdominal muscles, the top of the thighs, really focus on some of those hands and the fingers. Don't do all of it, just get nice little splurts of paint throughout of the miniature. Just to kind of give it some brightness and we're gonna wash it down here in a minute after we do some 
couple more highlights and then you'll see this miniature really come together once it dries. We're gonna brighten up portions of our ribs and our antlers with some Evil Suns Scarlet. So this is obviously a brighter red, the brightest red I think Citadel offers. And we're gonna use this sparingly, just parts of our miniature that you want to really brighten up to make it stand out just a little bit more. Now be careful while you're doing this, you obviously just did the highlights of the, the brightest tone of gray, so we wanna take our time, maybe just hit the outspurts, and while we're doing it at an angle, Make sure you have your angle away from and not pointing at our miniature while you're spraying. To desaturate some of these bright spots, we're gonna use Dark Reaper really quick. And we're just using this very sparingly and we're hitting a lot of the undertone areas. It's like a grayish, bluish type color, and maybe a little bit just to kind of desaturate some of our areas um, that might be covered by a shadow or wouldn't get hit by the sun, and basically just making it a little bit more two-tone. And as you can see, I got some of the red on my miniature, which is almost inevitable, but we can clean that up. If you're looking at the card art, you notice his beard or its beard has um, a very bright, low hanging beard. So we're gonna kind of darken that up around. And then you can see that I actually got on top of the miniature with that red. We're gonna dull that down just a little bit. And then we're gonna mix in our, our wash here in a second. We're then gonna take some Fenrisian Gray from Citadel, and we're gonna spray over a lot of the same areas we just went over with that Dark Reaper. And again, that's just gonna kinda of give it that, that layer of contrast to make it just a look a little bit different in different spots of the miniature, and kinda of trick your eyes into thinking that there's a bunch of shadows and then there's a bunch of light on it. And as our last part, we're really looking at the underside of our miniature and just really getting into those recesses to make it that darker looking grayish blue, which I think looks really nice on this miniature. We're gonna create our wash, and we're gonna need a decent amount, like six to seven or eight, because I had to do this twice, brushfuls of Lamia Medium with an equal amount of Nolan Oil. So six, seven, eight brushfuls of Lamia Medium versus six to seven or eight brushfuls of Nolan Oil. Now 
we are now gonna take that wash we just created and we're gonna saturate the entire miniature. That's why I said you needed a lot of wash. If you need to make more, just go back and make more, it's not a big deal. But just go over, take your time, and don't go over too much in one area. If you get too much in one area, sop it up with your brush and then go back over it. Or go over your other spots with that wash. As you're washing this, washing this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can tell that there is a lot of surface area to cover, but once it dries, it's gonna look really, really, really good. Once it's dry, we're gonna work on our pedestal, I guess you could say. We're gonna make it look like a little ancient pedestal. So we're gonna dry brush some Dawnstone on there. I'm using the Dry Citadel Paint Dawnstone, which just makes it easier to use. So make sure you get most of that paint off your dry brush and we're just working it all the way around. Nice rough manner entire uh, over the entire pedestal. The next dry brush color we're gonna use is a little long beard gray. And now we're doing a little bit lighter and it's gonna pick out a lot of the edge areas of our miniature and the rocks on top of that pedestal. And the last color is gonna be Perexeti White, and we're doing this very lightly over the rocks and a lot of the edges of our pedestal. For the mouth and the tongue, we're gonna use a little Mephiston Red to brighten that up, and then we're gonna dole it down with a wash here in a second. Next, we're gonna take some Rathbone and we're gonna paint all of our teeth and the nails of our miniature. We're gonna wash those two colors we just did with a little Agrax Earth Shade and then let it dry.
Next, we're going to take some Screaming Skull, and we're going to very carefully paint the majority of our teeth, meaning paint them, but leave some of that nice dark Agrax earth shade in the recesses, and our nails. We're going to paint the nails and our teeth. And finally, we're gonna paint the base with Abaddon Black, and that's it, we're done. There wasn't a ton to it, but it, uh, hey, worked out pretty good. And it looks pretty fancy. That's something you can be proud of to put on the table. Didn't take us a whole lot of time, and it looks good. Just want to say thank you for watching and thank you for spending time and I hope you are a subscriber and I'll see you on the next episode. Alright, paint on.